All right, good afternoon. The second component of this week, and this is the second and last component for this week. Uh, next week, we'll finish off looking at um, electrolytic cells. So the last component of what I'd like you to focus in on when it comes to voltaic cells is calculating cell potential and how we can use these in a couple different equations to calculate Gibbs free energy and the equilibrium constant, which is mostly just plug and chug math. Um, so in calculating a voltage of a cell, when we have a, rea a redox reaction, we have a reduction and an oxidation reaction occurring together, and there's a transfer of electrons, a, a, uh, a transfer of electrons that is current. That cell uh, combination, the two of those together, very similar to what we did in the last section towards the end, is we can then calculate the cell potential of that combination of that oxidation and reduction combination. You'll notice that the E of the cell is the voltage of the cell, which is what the voltage is immediately. Now, once the cell operates and the high gravitational potential energy flows into the low, um, eventually the higher voltage will start to drop, the lower voltage will increase, and again, the battery will start to lose its voltage and its power. So what we're calculating is the voltage right away initially when we close the loop and create the circuit, okay? Now you'll notice that there's that little NOT symbol on the E again, and that NOT symbol means standard states. So in standard states, again, for thermodynamics, the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, not zero. That's for gas loss. For thermodynamics, it's 25 degrees Celsius. Brackets means concentration. Because we are putting some of these compounds into solutions, we must have one molar solutions. So a one molar solution is needed in order to have a standard cell. And lastly, the pressure, a standard pressure would be one atmosphere or 760 millimeters of mercury. Those are the conditions that must be met in order to calculate a voltage of a cell that is at standard conditions, okay? Now, when we have these cell potentials, um, I have, and I will supply in Canvas, a picture that shows many different reduction potentials. I'm gonna fast forward this picture in here. All of these reference potentials, all the, that table that I just showed you, all stem from causing the hydrogen reaction to be the reference cell. And therefore what they did is they made that cell have a voltage of zero volts. All of the other voltages that we get, for example, this zinc reaction, the voltage that we get from that is considering the hydrogen voltage to be zero. So if I put the hydrogen reaction with the zinc, and I figure out the voltage on that combination, if I make the hydrogen be zero volts, all of the voltage then is coming from the zinc reaction. And that's how they were able to figure out all these voltages, is putting them in combination with the hydrogen reference cell, creating a zero point and measuring all other voltages from that. And right here is that working equation I just showed you before. The E of the cell is the addition of the oxidation and reduction half reactions to get the full cell potential. All right, so let's look at our first problem here. So what is the iron half reaction? What is the voltage of the half reaction? Knowing that when I put iron with the hydrogen reaction, I get a voltage of 0.44 volts positive. And again, these are voltaic cells. Whenever we are dealing with a voltaic cell, the E of the cell, the cell voltage, must be greater than zero, must have a positive voltage. If it is not a positive voltage, it is not a voltaic cell. Okay, so here I've shown you already the half reactions. The iron is going from iron with a zero oxidation state to plus two, which means the electrons are on the product side. So this would be the oxidation half reaction. The hydrogen reaction is the electrons are on the reactant side. That would be your reduction. Okay, and then summing them together, you notice that they both transfer two electrons. So two electrons would be transferred in this balanced reaction. And we get the overall equation as shown above. And that total voltage, the E of the cell, is 0.44 volts. So then if I do a plug and chug up into this equation up here, I get 0.44 volts equals the oxidation reaction I do not know, that's the iron reaction, plus the reduction voltage is 0 volts. And so that tells me the oxidation potential for this reaction would be 0.44 volts. 
Now, would this be the voltage that would be shown in the table? You have to be careful. In questions on like this on the old national exam, if you were to ever take it, they might not be asking for the oxidation potential. They might be asking for what is this cell's reduction potential. If that is the case, 0.44 would not be correct because to make an oxidation into a reduction, you have to change the sign. So the answer would be negative 0.44 volts. So iron going into iron 2 should have a voltage of negative 0.44 volts. Look at back to page, we'll back, to, okay? All right, so turning to page two. So here are some different notes when it comes to cell potentials, but as I said before, in order for a cell to be a voltaic cell, it must be thermodynamically favorable. In order to be thermodynamically favorable, we must get a combination of reduction and oxidation potentials creating a cell voltage which is a positive voltage. Therefore, if the voltage of the overall cell is greater than zero, it is a voltaic cell and therefore it is spontaneous. This reaction will naturally occur when I close the loop and I attach the alligator clips and I have the sulfur when it's all created like you did in the last homework. When I connect it, the voltmeter will immediately register a positive voltage. Current is flowing from the anode to the cathode. The cell is operating. It's providing voltage. If it's negative, it is not spontaneous. It will not occur. Nothing happens. No, flow, flow, uh, no current is flowing. It is not thermodynamically favorable, and therefore the cell will not operate. Okay? All right, so knowing this, what I'd like you to do real quickly is pause my lecture. But before you do that, what I'd like you to do is I would like you to calculate the voltage of the cell for the three combinations. And to help you start get started, what I've done for you is below each of them is I went to that table on page five and I wrote down all of the reduction potentials of all these different half reactions. What I'd like you to do now is pause the lecture and calculate the voltage of each of these cell combinations and then restart the lecture and see if you got the correct values, okay? Go ahead and do that now. All right, so hopefully that wasn't too much of a challenge. So when we look at here, you'll notice that the cobalt reaction has got the cobalt plus two on the product side. Here, and the reduction potential, it's on the reactant side, so we have to flip it. So if I flip it, it becomes oxidation, and because of that, it becomes a value of positive 0.28 volts. Okay. The second reaction, notice that the iron 3 and iron 2 match up. We don't flip it, which is good, because the reduction half reaction we do not flip. But you'll notice that the amount of electrons does not match. So I have to double this reaction. Now if I double that reaction, do I change the voltage? The answer is no. Because we've doubled both sides, the differential in them is still the same. So we never change the voltages. The only time we change the voltage is if we flip them and make it change time. Otherwise we would not. Therefore now all we have to do is simply summate. And if I did my math right, we should have positive 1.05 volts. That would be what the voltage of this cell combination would be. Letter B. You'll notice that the silver reaction has to be flipped. Therefore, it's going to become negative 0 0.80 volts. The second reaction, you'll notice that it also would have to be flipped because the chloride is on the wrong side, which would flip the sign. Would I then add these voltages together? The answer is no. This cell combination is impossible. And this is one of the things they used to do in the national exam to try to say, what's wrong with the student's thought process here? What's wrong is you can't have both half cells being oxidation or both being reduction. Someone has to lose electrons, someone has to give electrons so that there's a transfer of electrons. This possible cell combination is impossible and would not occur. So this voltage is impossible. You wouldn't have anything. Now, could, this, could these two half cells ever produce a voltage? The answer is yes. Which two cells would you have to flip? From the last lecture, I said the voltage that you would flip would be the one that is least positive, and therefore you would flip the top reaction. So the only reaction that you should have flipped should have been this top one, 
and there and also double it because oops my bad hit that I would need to double this reaction so that they're both transferring two electrons so the cell that could result would be two solid silvers because I'm flipping it plus chlorine gas would produce two silver ions and two chloride ions you'll notice that this cell adds up it has they both have neutral charge on both sides and we have a reduction oxidation undergoing and therefore I'd have negative 0 0.80 volts plus 1.36 volts and that would add then to positive 0.56 volts so solid silver reacting with chlorine would be thermodynamically favorable but the reaction given in B is impossible because you can't have both half reactions be oxidation. Last reaction, letter C. Two iron three producing two iron two. You'll notice that there's a two in front of each of them, so I'll have to double this reaction. And it is written how it is in the overall equation, so we're going to leave it. Therefore, this must be reduction. The second reaction, you'll notice that the iodide is flipped, which makes it oxidation, and because I flip it, that makes it negative 0.54 volts. They both transfer two electrons, and we would get the overall equation. And since only one is being flipped, we have a reduction and an oxidation, so we are good. Adding it up gives me the overall cell voltage of positive 0.23 volts. So that's how we calculate voltaic cell potentials, making sure to flip one of the reduction potentials, making it oxidation making sure the number of electrons transferred is balanced, but that does not change the voltage of, that, of those cells, and then simply sum it. That's how we calculate the voltage, which is part of your homework for today. The second part is once I'm able to, so if I go by that table voltages, calculate cell potentials, I can now, if I know the cell voltage, I can have, and on the green sheets, we have these equations where I can convert a cell potential into delta G, and delta G is called Gibbs free energy, and free energy determines if the cell is thermodynamically favorable. Now some of you might have gone through that lecture that I went over in chapter 19 on thermodynamics. If you didn't, no big deal. The thing that you have to just take away from is this. If the G value is got a negative value, okay, it is thermodynamically favorable. Okay. If delta G is positive, it is not favorable, and therefore the reaction will not occur under the current conditions. If it's favorable, it will occur. Well, if I look back down here, if G is negative, to be thermodynamically favorable, E, we said, had to be positive. It has to be greater than zero. So if I've got a positive E value, I multiply that by F. F is a constant. It's called Faraday's constant. It has a value of 96,480 joules per mole. It's something if you go into physics and talk about electricity with Faraday's constant, this is something you'll talk about again. But for the most part, it's plug and chug. You'll plug in the value of 96,480. That's a positive value. And N stands for the number of moles of electrons transferred. So if a cell transfers two electrons, N would be two moles of electrons. We'll plug in two because there's two electrons transferred per mole of reaction. So N is a positive number. So because of that, we put a negative out in front because if the cell potential is positive, if E is positive, that's going to cause this whole product to be multiplied by negative one, which will make it negative. So in this equation, whenever the voltage is positive, the G value will be negative. If the E value is negative, then the two negatives will cancel, and that's going to give me a G value that is positive. So when we have a negative cell potential, we'll get a positive G value. When we get a negative G value, it's because the voltage is positive. All right, so in this problem, it says calculate the G of the reaction, okay, give, being given a voltage table. 
So again, I looked at these two reactions and their reduction potentials on page five, and these are the voltages I wrote down. If you want to go ahead and try this practice problem now, pause the lecture, try to calculate it, plug and chug, please do, and then uh, start the lecture up again and see if you get the correct value. All right, so you'll notice that the bromine reaction is the one that is flipped. And when I flip it, that makes that voltage negative. So when I flip it and add it up, I get a total voltage of 0.27 volts. So that is the combination or the voltage of this cell. It's positive. And therefore, already I know the G value that I get from it will be negative, and therefore this reaction is thermodynamically favorable. This cell will operate once I close the connection. All right, so let's calculate delta G. So now it just becomes plug and chug. Negative, the value of N is how many electrons are transferred per mole of reaction. You'll notice that it's two. So we get two moles of electrons times Faraday's constant, which is 96,480 times the voltage of the cell, we calculated it being 0.27 volts. Pull out our calculator and multiply this. Now Faraday's constant is in joules per mole, and the volts will cancel. And I get a delta G value, not meaning again that it is in standard state conditions. Using three sig figs, I get negative 52,100 joules per mole. Okay? If they were to ask you for kilojoules, it would be negative 52.1 kilojoules per mole. Okay? So that's how we calculate G from E, and vice versa, if I know the G, I could easily plug that in and solve for the voltage. So this reaction, which is on your green sheet, allows you to flip back and forth between the voltage of the cell and the Gibbs free energy value. Okay? Last problem for today. Okay. All the is we can also use the cell potential to calculate the equilibrium constant for a reaction. And you'll notice this reaction is an, actually a combination of two reactions. The first being the one that we just talked about, and the other one is G in relation to K. And therefore, um, using these two equations, setting the G's equal to each other, setting these two equations equa together, and isolating for the E, we get this working equation. So if I know the cell potential, I can also use that to calculate the equilibrium constant for that chemical reaction. So let's do that. So here I see the overall reaction again. You'll notice that the silver reaction is both flipped and multiplied by three. Oops. Now multiplying this reaction by three does not change the voltage, but I do flip it. And by flipping it, it becomes negative 0 0.80 volts. The other one does not flip. Adding those together, I get 0.80 one positive point one six volts would be the cell potential okay now if I know the cell potential I'm going to plug that back in and solve for K so point one six volts equals R is the gas constant which is in joules per mole T the temperature has to be the Kelvin temperature if it's a standard cell that's 298 Kelvin. Divided by N is the number of electrons transferred. In this case, the half reactions tell me that it has to be 3. Faraday's constant is also in joules per mole. It has to be because the R is in joules per mole. So we want those two to cancel. And that gives me LN times K. So the only thing I don't know is the K value. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply and divide all of these numbers here. So 8.31 times 298 divided by 3 divided by 96,400 or an 80, excuse me. So that gives me a value of 0 0.00856 times 
times the ln of k will divide by 0 0.00856. So this is nothing more than really doing plug and chug chemistry, which I know most of you love. So 18.7 equals the ln of k. All right, lastly, how do I get, this is not k, it's the natural log of k. How do we get rid of an ln? Well, the calculator tells us that the opposite function of ln will cause us to inverse or get out of that function, which is little e. Not big E, but little e. So I have to take 18.7 to the little e. And the equilibrium constant ends up getting a value of 1.32 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, times 10 to the 8. What, is a, what does this k value tell us? Again, if you remember, whenever k is greater than 1, that tells us that product formation is very favorable. And because this k value is so big, it's huge, product formation is extremely favorable, and it should be, because what do we know? The voltage of the cell is positive. So if the voltage of the cell is positive, it's thermodynamically favorable, the cell will operate product formation is favorable and we do expect we would expect to get a large k value we are predominantly going to end up getting almost all products when this reaction stops and very little reactants will remain so that's how we calculate g and k from e values and that's what your homework is so here's on page five of this and you can come back to this and pause it if you need to Here's an example of what you would have seen on the national exam. These are reduction potentials. You'll notice that the electrons are on all of the reactant side. These are all reduction potentials. So we would say that these are the standard reduction potentials of all these reactions if that half reaction was doing reduction. Now what happens if I have to flip a reaction? I look at this copper reaction down here towards the bottom. If I were to flip it and make it an oxidation reaction, what happens to the voltage of that cell? Well, that voltage then flips to being negative. So if you make a reduction into an oxidation, you have to flip the sign of the voltage and make it negative, okay? So the reduction half reaction, you leave alone, you get the number from the table. The oxidation one, the one that is flipped, you have to then flip that value and make it negative or change the sign on it. And then you simply summate. So the reduction potential plus the oxidation potential add up to the E of the cell. And that is the standard working equation that we use in calculating cell potentials. Okay, and again, the, you will always be given the values in reductions, so you do have to be aware that for the oxidation reaction you have to flip the sign on it from the table and then simply sum them together and find that iron reaction, you'll notice right here, iron two becoming iron, if I flip the reaction when it's written as a reduction potential, it's negative 0.44 volts, it matches. This is how we are able to, again, this table of electrical potentials, um, I'll have up on Canvas, but you really don't need it for the homework because I'm gonna show you the homework now. I have uploaded this homework onto Canvas I have supplied you all of the voltages necessary to be able to go ahead and figure out the cell potentials for these five combinations. So go ahead and use these voltages and calculate them out. And then in problem two, I'm asking you to calculate the G value and the K value for reactions um, B, the second one, and C. So utilize those two equations and calculate the G and K value for the second reaction and the third reaction. Just those two and give me both the G and K values for each of those along with the five uh, cell potentials and tell me which five, which of the five combinations are thermodynamically favorable. Okay, and that will conclude your homework. Take a picture of that, upload that to Canvas, and you are done for the week. This is Voltaic Cells. Uh, covered so you kind of know how we get voltages from cells and batteries and how they operate and the next week we'll talk about what happens when the cell potentials are negative 
when we when we have a negative voltage how do we get that cell to operate because it won't occur naturally so what do we do to make it operate and what is the usefulness for those type of cell combinations all right thanks again for listening uh, again um, you have until the end of this until Sunday to get this uploaded but you actually have the next couple weeks to get this uploaded but if you want to stay on track and be done for next week because next week is the last week we'll do any new work getting this done by Sunday and then we'll have one more lecture to cover electrolytic cells to work with and then you'll be through this class appreciate your time and commitment to the course um, and um, continued success and I hope you guys are all doing well thank you for listening